Welcome to Poisonous Plants 1 to 1, a story about poisonous plants told in 121 seconds. With all the recent focus on bees and other pollinators, I thought I'd take a look at poisonous plants and bees. I can't help thinking that many people are more concerned about the possibility of honey being toxic than are worried about the health of the bees. I want to look at three factors. First, bees will normally visit many different plants, so the amount of toxic nectar they collect is quite small. Tests have shown that you'd have to eat an improbably large amount of honey to get anywhere near to ingesting a harmful concentration of poison. Of course, if bees do visit a more limited range of plants, they might collect enough, almost solely, toxic nectar. The most likely outcome is that the bees die and do not return the nectar to the hive. In the west of Scotland, this can occur in spring when there is little else but rhododendrons in flower. Beekeepers know to keep their bees in the hive at times like this. There are plants where the bees collect enough toxic nectar to make the honey poisonous. The good news here is that this also tends to make the honey dark, smelly and unpalatable. That's certainly the case with honey made from ragwort nectar. There is a plant in New Zealand that can lead to harmful honey. Coriaria arborea, tutu, but it takes a special set of circumstances. The vine hopper insect ingests the plant's sap and excretes a sweet liquid. In times of drought, bees collect this and that leads to toxic honey. Professional beekeepers know when this is likely to happen and keep their hives closed, but instances of poisoning have been traced to hobby beekeepers. For a lot more information on poisonous plants, please visit www.thepoisongarden.co.uk.